Welcome to 21st Sports Recap and Reaction for the Baltimore Ravens at the San Francisco 49ers in their Week 6 matchup played October 18, 2015. We're going to go over the scores and the stats and give our breakdown and analysis. So starting off in the first quarter, about midway through the first, Phil Dawson hit a 53-yard field goal. And it was now 3-0 San Francisco over Baltimore. Dawson would hit a 31-yard field goal with about two minutes left in the first. And it was 6-0 Niners over the Ravens. So that was the score after one. And in the second quarter, less than two minutes in, Justin Tucker would put the Ravens on the scoreboard with a 22-yard field goal. As it was now 6-3 as the Ravens cut the lead to three. So now, with 12 and a half minutes still left before halftime, Colin Kaepernick would air it out for Torrey Smith, who would go 76 yards to pay dirt against his former team for the touchdown. Phil Dawson added the extra point, and it was now a 10-point lead for the Niners with the score San Francisco 13, Baltimore 3. Then, with about eight minutes still left before halftime, Phil Dawson hit his third field goal of the game, and this one from 26 yards out, and it was now 16-3 as the Niners led by 13. Then, with a little over four minutes left before halftime, Justin Tucker hit his second field goal of the quarter and the game when he hit a 36-yarder that made it a 10-point game at 16-6 with the Niners still in the lead. And that would remain the score going into halftime. And in the third quarter, Phil Dawson hit his fourth field goal of the game. This one from 42 yards out. And it was now 19-6 as the Niners were back up by 13. Then with about two and a half minutes still left in the third, Joe Flacco hit Steve Smith for a 34-yard touchdown. Tucker added the extra point, and it was now a six-point game with the score San Francisco 19, Baltimore 13. So that was a score after three quarters of play. And so heading into the fourth quarter, it was a six-point game. But a little over four minutes into the fourth quarter, Quentin Patton would catch a 21-yard touchdown pass from Colin Kaepernick. And they went for two, but they failed. But they were still in the lead 25 to 13 as they were up by 12. So they were going for two to try to make it a 14 point game, but with the fail, it would be a 12 point game. So now, with about a little over five minutes left, the Ravens scored after going 80 yards in 14 plays, eating up a little over five and a half minutes. And Joe Flacco hit Kamar Aiken for a two yard touchdown. Tucker hit the extra point. And it was now a five-point game with the score 25-20. to 20. Niners still in the lead. Like you said, just over five minutes left to play. So it was anyone's game. The Niners would get the ball after the touchback. And they would start off on their own 20. They would end up getting a first down and moving the ball up towards midfield. But their drive would stall. And on fourth and seven from their own 48 they would be forced to punt the ball. So now the Ravens would take over after the punt, and the punt was a touchback. So they had it on their own 20 with a minute left to play. So the Ravens with the ball down by five, just over a minute left to play, but no timeouts. So the Ravens did not have a timeout, and they the first start off with an incomplete pass, then Flacco on second down, hit Ross for an 18-yard reception, that brought the ball to the Baltimore 38. Another incomplete pass stopped the clock. Flacco would then go to Steve Smith. Kind of left him out to dry there in between a couple of defenders. And it was in the middle of the field. It was a 22-yard reception that brought the ball into San Francisco territory at the 40. But without any timeouts, they were not able to stop the ball or stop the clock. And so they would have to spike the ball. So they spiked the ball with just 13 seconds left in this game. And then the Niners actually got a penalty for having 12 men on the field. So it would be second and five on the Niners, 35 for the Ravens. An incomplete pass would bring up third down. With just six seconds left, it would be the final play of the game 
three points would do them no good as they were down by five, so they aired it out, went for the end zone, tossed it up, and they swatted it down, and the Niners hold on to win this one as this game came down to literally the very final play with victory up in the air. But they swatted it out of the air, and the Niners hold on to win this one in a very exciting game. And the Niners are now 2-4 and four on the season. They're 2-1 and one at home as they have a winning record at Levi. And the Ravens 1-5. They're 1-3 on the road. And these teams have underrated defenses, I would say, in my opinion. They've got tough defenses. they got some injuries, but they both play pretty tough. And it was low scoring, you know, early on. But then things got going a little bit. Not too many points, but it was an exciting finish, to say the least. As Flacco made it interesting. The Niners, I thought they were kind of in control of this game. Once they, you know, they started off from the jump in the lead. You know, and like I said, the Ravens, they did make things interesting. But they were never able to take the lead away from the Niners. It's the Niners led the entire game. And I thought Colin Kaepernick had a pretty good performance. Flacco had a lot of yards as well. He was airing it out. Both quarterbacks threw for over 340 yards in the game. It's Kaepernick 16 of 27, 340 yards, two touchdowns. Flacco 33 for 53. Just so many passes he threw. He had 343 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. You see, he threw twice as many passes and had about the same amount of yards. <laughs> so Kaepernick, much more productive. Of course, a lot of that had to do with some big plays that he was having huge completions in this game. Is He had a 51-yard reception by Bolden, a 76-yard reception by Smith. It was for a touchdown. Miller had a 52-yard reception so they're just getting big chunks of yardage on their passing plays. I said I thought it was an excellent performance by Kaepernick. He also had three carries for 10 yards as well. Carlos Hyde, 21 carries for 55 yards. Not a lot of yards, but they were committed to the run, and that helped them, you know, to run down the clock and keep their defense off the field. Four sets, 17 carries for 62 yards. He also had seven receptions for 39 yards. So he had 101 yards in this game total for four set. Steve Smith had seven receptions for 137 yards and a touchdown. Anquan Bolden, five receptions for 102 yards. Torrey Smith, three receptions for 96 yards, including that 76-yard touchdown. Miller had three receptions for 89 yards. Patton, two receptions for 38 yards and a touchdown. And all that was for the Niners. Phil Dawson was perfect in this game. Four for four on the field goals. One for one on the extra point. Tucker, two for three on the field goals. Two for two on the extra points. And on defense, Navarro Bowman, one of the best linebackers in the game. 13 tackles in this one. Will Hoyt had 11 tackles and an interception. Acker had an interception as well for San Francisco. And for Baltimore... Smith had seven tackles and a sack. Guy had a sack. Elvis Dummerville had a half a sack. And Jurgen had a half a sack as well. But they did not. They did not intercept Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick was virtually mistake free. No turnovers by Kaepernick. And I said that Baltimore got a tough defense even without Suggs. The Ravens 25 first downs, 15 first downs for San Francisco. And on third downs, the Ravens 4 for 13, 30% converted. The Niners 5 for 13, converting 38%. The Ravens went for it once on fourth down. They did convert. Total net yards 420 for the Ravens, 391 for the Niners. On the ground, net rushing 77 yards for Baltimore, 65 for San Francisco. And through the air, 343 for Baltimore. 326 for the Niners as Kaepernick was sacked three times, lost 14 yards. So it's always a good thing to take the sack instead of throwing a pickoff, in my opinion, anyway. Whereas we saw, you know, uh, conversely, right, Kaepernick sacked three times, no interceptions. 
Contrast that with Peyton Manning, who threw three interceptions in his game against Cleveland, but wasn't sacked at all. I'll take the sacks. You can have the interceptions. <laughs> you know, we look at the penalties. Four penalties against the Niners, 25 yards penalized. Three penalties against the Ravens, 15 yards penalized. And in the red zone, both of these teams struggling. That's what made this game interesting down the wire was that they were not able to get it into the end zone. Only one red zone touchdown in this game. That was by Baltimore. They were one for three, just 33% in the red zone. And for the Niners, they were 0 for three. And that usually you're not going to win, but they found a way to win, especially that defense was playing excellent for the Niners. They did a good job. And Phil Dawson, 4 for 4, he kept kicking the field goals, so it didn't matter that they were 0 for 3. But uh, this game wouldn't have been as close if they were able to get in the end zone when they got in the red zone. The Ravens actually won the battle of possession as they had the ball 33 minutes and 7 seconds. The Niners, 26 minutes and 53 seconds. So, so the Niners... They're actually they're doing better than I thought they would. Even though they're only two and four, the way they're playing, they're very competitive. Even with losing so many players, so much personnel, you know, and of course coaching and everything. But I think Tom Masula has them playing really well. They're competitive. They play tough, and they're interesting to watch. They're fun to watch actually. And this game was fun to watch. It was fun to watch Kaepernick airing this thing out. Flacco too. I mean, he's got an arm. But they just they don't have balance to their offense. You know, they just they pass the ball way hey, too much. And this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the year. If you go and look at my season preview for the Ravens, I was saying this is what was gonna happen because Tressman's their offensive coordinator, and this is what he did with Cutler last year in Chicago. He's doing the same thing with Flacco in Baltimore, and that's why they are one in five. And this is with the Niners, I think Tom Sewell is doing a pretty good job. He has that defense still playing the way the Niners defense has been playing for the last few years. They've been one of the tougher defenses in the league. Even with all the players, the switch over, the turnover, and the personnel, they still have that toughness. And, you know, they're actually a very competitive team regardless of their record. You know, of course, uh, they obviously could be better. They've got some things to address, but I think that they could build upon the small successes they have this year towards you know, the future, and actually, like I said, I think I've been kind of surprised by how good Thomas Sula was, I didn't really give him, you know, I didn't have high expectations for him, but I think he's been doing a pretty decent job, even though they are just 2-4, and four. they are 2-1, and one, you know, they're at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California, so... That is something right there. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. Definitely interested to read your thoughts and opinions. Thank you very much for listening. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you're having a good day and had a great weekend. And enjoyed all the sports.